Shalom, sisters. All praises to the Most High. Call Hello Yahweh. Ba Hashem Hamashiach. Wa Malak Yahweh Shai. Rakatashim Kawulanyum. The water for the Most High allowing us to wake up this morning, allowing us to do all the things we needed to do for our family. So today's video is just about what you need to know about becoming a Proverbs 31 woman. No, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen over time um, from a lot of learning, growing. So I found this video. Well, a sister sent a video in a um, group chat that I'm in. And she asked for a sister's opinion about it. And I watched it and I gave my opinion. But I, I figured that I could go a little bit deeper into it. So here's the video. Let me get to it. Now, I am going to pause and talk while this is going on. Oh, I'm going to so like, <laughs> I'm going to let it. I'm going to pause when I want to just, you know, let y'all know when I want to bring out a scripture and then I'll let it play. Okay, so hold on. Let me close this door because this TV is loud up here. Okay, so here's the video. A real man doesn't let his lady work. Long day. What do you know? This job is stressing me out. Well, you already know how I feel about that. Jeremy, look. Not today. I'm just saying because... It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. All right. You know, first and foremost, she's... It, like, it vexes me when she's acting like that. Because she, like, come on now. You don't even got to talk to him like that. She didn't have to talk to him like that. But first of all, you know... But wives, you have to be subjection to your husband, just like you would be in subjection to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So you wouldn't talk to Yahweh Shai or Yahweh like that, right? So you shouldn't talk to your husbands like that either. Like, all, she didn't have to do all of that. No, don't start. I don't need that right now. She didn't need to do all of that. That was unnecessary. Okay? All right. Why not? I'm not quitting my job just so you can take care of everything. I'm not built like that. Bianca, at what point are you gonna let me be the man in the relationship? I mean, I have to know this. I'm making enough money to support us both. But you're so busy running around here trying to show people that you don't need a man and you have one. I'm the man. The man is the one that's supposed to provide Bianca. Wow. I'm not trying to be the man. I let you be the man. I mean, just because you provide for everything doesn't mean I can't help provide. What you want me to do? Sit around like these trash females who just want to look pretty and rather be a bill in a relationship instead of a partner? I was ready. Okay, so she said, what you want me to do? Sit around and not do nothing. But it's stuff you can do. It's stuff you won't have to do. I don't know why people think that being a stay-at-home mom or stay at, yeah, stay at home mom, stay at home wife is easy. It's hard work. You won't be working. Trust me. And it's an order. We all know the order. Yahweh, Yahweh, child, man, woman, and child. All right, so there's an order. So as soon as her husband said, Look, I don't want you going to work, I want you to stay home, she honest, honestly should have respected that and said, Okay, you know what? I'm going to just stay home. Um, I was put in that position. When my husband and I first got together, he didn't want me to work. He said, I don't really want you to work. Don't do it. You don't really need to. It's okay. I got it. You don't need to go to work. And I was like, well, you know, I'm I'm a hairstylist. I like to do hair. What do you think about me working at a salon? He didn't mind. So I ended up getting a job. And then... Yeah, I got the job, and then he was like, look, I really do not want you on your feet all day. I don't. I really don't want you working. So I was like, all right, okay, all right, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And I did that because I respected the fact that he didn't want me to do that and because he could afford everything. But um, it that eliminates stress by being in subjection to your husband. That's why it says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's deep. You 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 eliminate a lot of stress. You eliminate a lot of problems by just being in order. It's not you know it's not hard to just go with the flow. And sometimes not sometimes you gotta just let your husband lead. 
And as an Israelite woman, the Most High will bless you in ways that you couldn't even imagine because you follow an order. You let your husband lead. Even if you think that your husband could be wrong or could be off about a certain situation, just be like, look, okay, I'm going to just let you lead. Most High might see that and have favor on you and work stuff out in your favor at the end of the day. So you can't, you can't buck up against order. That's going off. And that's what she was doing at the end of the day. It's a certain way. You wouldn't be stressing if you just quit your job and let me work. I might stop stressing, but I'll become miserable. Jeremy. In the scripture, Salakia, she said she would become miserable. She might stop stressing, but she'll become miserable. You gonna become miserable because you staying at home? You cleaning up? You can still, you, Salakia, you can still do stuff around your house. You can start your own business. But that goes all into being a Proverbs 31 woman. And this is what happens when you don't know the law, statutes, and commandments. But this goes into being a Proverbs 30 woman. woman. You're not just going to be sitting at home doing nothing. You're going to be working, making sure your household's taken care of. But we're going to get into all of that. I'm going to let it play out. I was smart, ambitious, and I had goals in life before I met you. And I'm not going to stop being who I am just because I'm with you. We have to learn how can we achieve our goals together. Just don't get it. No, you don't get it. Why are you over there washing dishes? Huh? I would have been like, I'm over here washing dishes because you was at work when I told you that I wanted you to be at home. Why are you washing dishes and I'm not? I mean, because they were dirty. I mean, I came home, you were still at work, so I just did it. What was I supposed to do? What, let you come home from a, a long day at work, I've been at the house and not do anything? I mean... Exactly. That's what being a great partner is. We pick up where the other person is lacking. It was helping me just like I'm working, it's helping you. Now, with your logic... But if he say that he don't need no help, he don't need no help. Dang, she talked about some, see, why are you washing the dishes? She was supposed to been do that. She was supposed to been washing dishes. She was supposed to be at home. Hey. You said a man is the one that's supposed to provide? Yes. And the woman is supposed to just cook and clean. So why are you cleaning? <laughs> this is not the 50s where women couldn't work. And the only thing that made her a good woman is cooking and cleaning. We have way more to offer than just that. And how are we going to build together? If you're the only one building, baby. Hmm? I love you too. Now you up here washing dishes, baby. What you about to cook? A <laughs> <laughs> uh, sister hungry. What you about to cook? <laughs> you got it, girl. You got it. Hey. All right, look. She was getting on my nerves. You know, she was being worldly. She even though she didn't know, but are we about to get all into that? Okay, we about to all we about to talk about being a Proverbs thirty one woman. We about to get into it. So let's do it. Okay. All right. So what you need to know about becoming a Proverbs 31 woman, all right? First and foremost, like I said, Ephesians 5 and 22, you eliminate so much stress by being in subjection, okay? That's, that's, that, I can't stress how much you have to be in order, okay? It eliminates so many problems, just stay in order, all right? So let's get into it. Proverbs 31. So first of all, first and foremost, you got to stay in order. And you got to do your husband good and not evil all the days of his life. And that's evil to talk back to your husband, to get smart with him, to question him, to... Well, you you know, you might have questions, be like, hey, you know, what do you think about this and the third? But to question his leadership and stuff, that's disrespectful. And that's kind of evil if you think about it. That's going off. You're supposed to do your husband good. You're supposed to encourage your husband. You're supposed to uplift him. You're supposed to make sure that, you know, he has everything that he needs to be a leader in his household. And if he teaches, and to, to uh, be a good leader while he teaches. Whereas that's the whole point of being a helpmate. 
And anyway, so you work and you also work willingly with your hands. So it's always going to be stuff that you're going to have to do around the house. Whether it be you got to do laundry, you got to do the dishes, you got to clean the carpet, you got to wipe the walls, you got to wipe the ceiling fans. You're going to have to, you know, either you homeschooling your kids, you're going to have to do crafts, projects. You're going to have to be, you're going to be doing everything. you literally going to be doing everything. Like I was telling the sisters that a Proverbs 31 woman is pretty much a woman that's a jack of all trades. Honestly, we should be able through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai to knock out a lot of stuff as Israelite woman. Um, and when I say that, that's going into um, being able to know how to cook. All right. Being able to know how to clean. Understanding what's your family's favorite meal. You know, what your family, what your husband, your family don't like and what they do like. Um, when it comes to whatever your family, if you need to sew up some fringes on a shirt. So you should be able to know how to cook. You should be able to know how to sew. You should be able to know how to teach. You should be able to know how to clean up. Um, what else? What else is something that you, a jack of all trades. Do your daughter's hair, um, whatever you, I'm trying to think of stuff that I do. You pretty, I mean, whether it be crafts or whatever, I don't know. The most high, you know, the most high, he put the spirit on, uh, on Israelite women to accomplish a lot of things. And we, um, we a jack of all trades. We, we, you name it, we will do it. We've been doing it. We'll do it. Okay, so anyway, y'all get what I'm saying. And then we also bring food from afar. So we go to the grocery store, all right, pick out the groceries for the week, make a grocery list, do what we got to do for our family, make sure our family have whatever they need to have in the house. We wake up early, take care of whatever business we need to take care of. And waking up, you know how good it feels when you wake up while the sun is still down? And then you you know you throw a load of clothes in a washing machine, you clean the kitchen, or you already prepare you prepare dinner. Like that's a good feeling. That's a beautiful feeling. That's why the scripture says she wakes up early. And your candle don't go out by night. Also, you consider something and then you make it happen. And then whatever you do, it prosper, it grows from there. So let's say you consider a business. You consider a business, you talk to your husband about it, you prayed about it, and you're like, look, I'm ready to start this business, or I'm ready to, you know, let's say, for example, I want to set up a, a room, a homeschool room in my uh, house for my children. So say I want to do that. I considered it, all right? I want to make it happen, and then it'll grow from there. It'll grow from there. My children will grow with knowledge and understanding. They'll grow with everything they need. So when it's time for them to be registered for school, Lord willing, they'll be ahead of the game. That's the part of being a Proverbs 31 woman. Whether it's you, cons it's you considering something and you doing your husband good and your family good. Close this door. So I can. And whatever comes from that prospers. If you're doing it, you know, being sincere. You also gird up your loin with strength. So you're not, you, you're going to put off that weak nature. Are you going to be girded up with strength? Because it's a lot of stuff that we're going to have to endure in these last days. It's a lot of stuff going on now that Israelite women have to endure in these last days. There's so much prophecy being fulfilled. You got hurricanes hitting everywhere, tornadoes, floods. It's, we going through it. And as an Israelite woman, you got to gird up your loins for your household, for your children. And you got to put off your weak nature and your immortal thoughts. And you got to gird your, lo your loins up with strength and wisdom of your how about Shimmy, how shy, because we, we all know that wisdom is the stability of the last days. Wisdom shall be stability of thy times. All right. Oh, and it also says, look, y'all, I ain't. I I I don't I didn't mean to say I ain't, but <laughs> it also says don't just sell anything. You perceive that your merchandise is good. All right, so if you want to start a business, I know I'm jumping from topic to topic, but I'm trying to go in like the order of the Proverbs um, 31 woman. But anyway, it says 
you you pretty much don't sell any just don't sell anything you perceive that your merchandise is good so if you want to start a business or if you want to start something don't just sell it to sell it look at it if you about to sew if you about to sell some shirts look at the stitching say is my stitching up to par for me to sell this is this quality to give to Israel is this uh say you want to be a painter for Israel is this painting quality if you want to sell oils is my oils thick enough do they smell good am i you know is this what i would want to buy don't just do something just to do it you know what i mean so like i said we sow okay we give to the poor and needy all right and you gotta know whom you do whom you do well to if you know israelite family or israelite brother and sister that's in need reach out to them Reach out to them and say, hey, what can I do for y'all? Oh, or if you ever see a family that need help, say, oh, do y'all need help with anything? That's being a Proverbs 31 woman. Helping out the poor and the needy. We all going to need help. Whether it be spiritually, you need help spiritually, you need somebody to uplift you. The prayer of a righteous woman availeth much, you know. And even if you ask your husband, most importantly, to pray for that person as well. Whether you need somebody to help you financially Understanding that charity covers the multitudes of sins. And if you don't have charity, like Paul said, you don't have nothing. Nobody's perfect. And also it says that your husband is known at the gates. Husband is a good man. Your husband is a good man. He's he's um an honorable man. He takes care of his family. He does what he needs to do. He's a good provider. He's there. For your family, you know, in all type, in all aspects, he's a good man. And it says when he sits with, and he, Osalakia says, and when he sits with the elders. So if he, you know, got elders that he's cool with, he got elders, you know, that he can go and talk to, whatever it may be, your husband is known in the gates. He's a good man. For example, I would like to say my husband is a good man. He's known in the gates and he sits amongst the elders. Um, and I, that's an honorable thing to say, and I'm proud to say that my husband is that is a um is a good man. All right, look, <laughs> um, it says strength and honor are her clothing; she shall rejoice in the time to come. Strength and honor, you're gonna have to have like I brought up before. Strength and honor are your clothing. You're gonna need to be strength and clothed in wisdom. Or in these last days, you're going to rejoice in the time to come. Yeah, being a stay-at-home mom, being an Israelite woman, you know, it's it can be frustrating. It can be hard trying to transform into that, you know, that new woman, trying to put off your old ways sometimes. Sometimes it can be hard. But you shall rejoice in the time to come. Sometimes you might you might get frustrated dealing with your children. You might get overwhelmed dealing with everything, you know, that's going on in your life, whether it be you got a baby on the way or, you know, your kid's about to start school or, you know, whatever it, whatever it may be that you have going on in your life and you're overcoming, you know, whatever that is, whatever obstacle you have because you you have your strength and clothed and wisdom and you know, you live your laws by the statutes and commandments, you're gonna rejoice in the time to come. You're gonna rejoice when it's time for you to get the kingdom. You're gonna rejoice, you know, at the end of the day when you go to sleep and you're like, look, I, I did it. I made it another day. I did this with my kids. I did this with my husband. You're gonna rejoice in your time to come. And then it also says she opens her mouth with wisdom and her tongue is the law of kindness. Meaning, whatever you say out your mouth, Salaki, whatever you say out your mouth, it should be, you know, yeah, as Israelite women, we like to joke around a lot. Like with me and my sisters, we joke around a lot. We like to, you know, have fun. But at the end of the day, when we always have our serious discussions, when we always talk about the scriptures, we always open our mouth with wisdom. All right. And it also says her tongue is a law of kindness. So when I'm with my sisters, usually we we always have good conversations. We always bringing out the scriptures, talking about the scriptures, having good, holy conversations. And it says her tongue is a law of kindness, meaning you uplift your sisters. OK, so anyway. It also says that you looketh well to the ways of your household and eateth not the bread of idleness. All right. And we already pretty much brought that out. You will make sure your household got everything that your, your household need. All right. 
Your husband should wake up. Your husband and your children should wake up and call you. Bless your children to praise you at the end of the day. Like my like my children, for example, they, we know when they wake up in the morning, they be like, oh, hey, mommy. Good morning, mommy. Like they just be so happy. And I know it's like that for other Israelite mothers, too. Like even though your kids are young or if your children are older, and sometimes they might not show it. But, you know, at the end of the day, our children are proud of us and your children are probably proud of you because they see that you're doing what you got to do, whether it's your you're a good mother, a good teacher, you're there for them and they know that they can count on you. Every child, every Israelite child should call their mother blessed if you're doing what you got to do and keeping the commandments. Um, and it says many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excels them all. So when I read that, I say, look, you got to try to be the best that you can be and strive for perfection. Don't try to outdo somebody else. Don't don't try to. So like, don't try to outdo another sister. If you see a sister can make me trees or, you know, you see a sister can. I don't know. Say a sister got a talent or something. I don't know. Or sister got something going on. Don't try to outdo that sister. Just try to outdo the old you. Be the best that you can be. All right? And it's more so spiritual. It's about, it's not about what you do, how you can excel somebody. I mean, excel your sisters in the flesh. It's about excelling the old you. And who's going to fear? What daughter is going to um, fear you? How about Shimmy? How about the most? Which daughter is going to be willing? Salaki, which daughter is going to be willing to strive and fight for the truth until death? Salaki, get Asher, get out. What sister's going to fight for the truth until death and strive for the truth until death? Who's going to really be that ride or die for your how about shimmy how shot? Who's going to be that sister that's going to, you know, get put to death for the truth? Who's going to be that sister that's going to hold her husband down? All right. Who's going to be that sister that's, that's going to really fight for and praise and honor Yahweh by Shem Yahweh by keeping all his law, statutes, and commandments to the best of his ability, to the best of your ability. That's being a virtuous daughter that excels them all. It's not about really what you do in the flesh, even though what you do in the flesh is your works. How can I put this? It's like your a woman. You're gonna you're gonna be known by your works at the end of the day, of course. But Yahweh by Shem Yahweh he's gonna judge your spirit. All right. See if you fear him and keeping the commandments. And if you're really going to be down for him. That's the woman that excels them all. Not the woman that know how to cook the best or the woman that know how to sew the best. It's the woman who's spiritually up there, high up there. And that fears you. How about Shimmy Hosha? It says, that's why it says, um, many daughters have done virtuously. But thou excellest them all. Just try to strive for perfection, strive for perfection to the best of your ability. And the only way that you can really strive for perfection and excel to be like that top Proverbs 31 daughter of the Most High is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Not being envious, not causing strife or contention, not being a... Um, an evil woman to your husband, not talking back to your husband, not uh, letting people blaspheme the word of your how about shim y'all shy, uh, rebuking people sharply, correcting people, you know, being a, a princess and a warrior of your how about shim y'all shy, standing up for, you know, the word of the Lord. It's many things that you have to do to become, to excel all a lot of Israelite sisters. You you really got to strive for perfection. Um, it also says, Favor is this for beauty is vain, but a woman that fears Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, she shall be praised. All right? We already know favor is deceitful. That's, you could be a beautiful woman and your insides be like a damn trash bag. And it could be a woman that's not so attractive or not so appealing to the eye, appeasing, to, well, yeah, appealing to one's eye, but have all the wisdom in the world and be a good, virtuous woman. And also, I like to, 
I like to think about this a lot too. And it made me take a, it made me actually stop. Like I not saying I don't care about my looks anymore, but I used to always care about how my hair looked, about how, you know, my like just always cared about my appearance. And I stopped doing that, especially when I read that favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Because it is. It's just vanity at the end of the day. Like, it's just pure vanity. As long as, I know, as, long as I'm trying my best to strive for, to strive for perfection and fearing you how about shimmy how shy. I know at the end of the day, I'll sh- I sh- that, so lucky that I shall be praised. And say I get into, you know, God for, uh, how about shimmy how shy forbid. I get into a car accident or a freak accident. Any sister can go through this. You can get into a freak accident. Um, Lord forbid anything happen to you. You, you destroy your face. Destroy. You're not beautiful anymore. But what do you have? The only thing you're going to have is your spirit. And if you feel your how about shimmy how shy, you're still going to be praised at the end of the day. Looks not everything. Even though it says that. I can't think of that scripture about a man. Loving the beauty of a woman. I can't think of the scripture right now. But, you know, you want to look, you still want to look decent and beautiful, but it's not, it's not all about looks. It's not all about looks. You got fear. You how about shimmy how shy. At the end of the day, that woman shall be praised. You're not going to be praised. You know, if a sister, look, it's not about, it's not about, it's not about vanity. All right. It's about fear. You how about shimmy how shy. At the end of the day, I'm going to just put and it like, when you also think about, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. I see that when I look at the Israelite community, I see that a lot of brothers and sisters praise sisters that's outwardly wicked. That it, it's it been proven that sisters are wicked. And they'll still be praised for their looks. Man will still praise a woman for being beautiful or be on a woman's sisters and brothers would praise a woman and talk to and be associated with a woman that's wicked all because she's beautiful and be on a woman's coattails because she's beautiful. The Most High's not dealing with that. The Most High said favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. The, the Most High's dealing with sisters that fear him. He's not dealing with sisters that think that they cute and that want to be seen. He's not dealing with those type of sisters. He's he's dealing with sisters that's, that's ready to die for him. He's dealing with strong warriors, people that's raising up their children. He's not dealing with none of that vanity. And it also says, give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So you don't really got to speak much on what you do as an Israelite woman. People should already know. Sisters that's homeschooling for over a decade. You got sisters that's been homeschooling for over a decade. You got sisters that got seven kids, 13 kids. All right, you got sisters that got to take the bus at 5 o'clock in the morning just to be at work at damn 9 o'clock. Then they got to make sure they kid at school and they doing it all by themselves. You got sisters that that literally got to go to work, deal with Esau, come back home, you know, clean up, cook, make sure their house is in order, and make sure their husband is happy at the end of the day. So even if you are just a stay-at-home mom, don't just think that, oh, I'm going to be miserable. No, the scriptures say that the most high is going to make a barren, the barren woman joyful and a keeper at house and it's like a keeper at home. So at the end of the day, you're going to be joyful because you're going to look at all the things that you do for your children, all the things you do for your household. You can be like, dang, you know, you're going to feel good about it. You're going to just be sitting down and you're just going to be smiling about it or you laying down and smiling about it. But whether it is you stay at home or you got to go to work, at the end of the day, your work still going to praise you in the gates. So just because you might not feel like, as an Israelite woman, all the sisters that I talk to, all the sisters that I see, just because you, you, you know, sometimes we might feel like we don't, we're not doing enough. We might not feel like, you know, oh, I'm not doing enough for my people. At the end of the day, all the sisters that I talk to, all the sisters that I, you know, follow on social media, y'all all set an example, for me at least. All right, whether it be the teachers, the sisters that homeschool their kids, whether it be, you know, the sisters that literally got to go to work, like I said before, everybody, all the sisters that I follow, y'all all all set examples. Y'all all all being a light to the world. So it's not just me that you set an example for or setting it that you make an example. How can I put it? Yeah, you're not just setting an example for me, but for all the other sisters, too. 
and for the people that's not in the world. All right. So let your, you know, let your light shine. So the other people that's not in the truth can see your works and be like, dang, you know, God must be, she real strong. God must be dealing with her. And so the people in the truth can glorify you. How about Shimmy How Shah, which is in heaven, because we know that the most high is dealing with you because you send an example. And you making people want to strive for perfection and say, okay, well, look, you know, if this sister can homeschool her kids for this amount of time, I could do it too. Why not me? You know, I could do do all things through Hamashiach Yehosha, who strengthens me. You know what I'm saying? So your work's going to praise you in the gates, even if you think that you're not even doing much. Your work's going to always praise you in the gates. Understand that. Don't ever feel discouraged or feel like you're not doing nothing or feel like, you know, just because you're a stay-at-home mom, you're not doing nothing. And it's good to have a good name in Israel. What's that scripture? A good name is above um is above all gold. Something like that, y'all. Hopefully that helped y'all. Cause I kind of feel like I was everywhere, but I just kind of went through the Proverbs 31. I kind of just went so lucky. I just kind of went through the Proverbs 31 woman. Um it's like I said, it's not gonna it's not gonna happen overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. Let's say you plant a, li a lily, right? You plant a lily. You go check on it. You planted it on Monday. You check on it Tuesday. It's not going to be a full-blown lily. So it's not going to be overnight. That lily going to have to get watered on. It's going to have to get some rain on it. It's going to have to go through a storm or two. It's going to have to go through some strong winds. So just like you, you that lily, you're going to have to go through obstacles all right you got to go through trials you got to examine yourself you're gonna to have to get most importantly watered by the word of your how about shimmy how shy that's the only thing that's going to grow you in the truth to be that proverbs 31 woman all right you're going to need some sunlight all right you're going to need to see righteous examples of other people's light it's something that it's something that gradually happens. All right? You got to constantly fear your how about Shimmy how shy and ask him to turn you into that Proverbs 31 woman. It also takes a lot of patience. And it also takes you examining yourself. At the end of the day, whether it be you write down all of the things that you feel like you need to do better. You sit and you pray on that. Even if you need to fast on that as well examining yourself as an Israelite woman is very important. And when you examine yourself daily, ask the Most High see if he sees any fault in you so that you can change that, so you can be that Proverbs 31 woman, so you can excel being that virtuous daughter of the all of Israel. If y'all get what I'm saying, you got to examine yourself daily. That's important. You can't just go day by day thinking that everything in your life is perfect or that you're perfect. You're not perfect. You got to strive for perfection. Nobody's perfect. Like the scripture says, is no man, it's not a man that sinneth not. So you're going to be a woman. You're going to slip up and you're going to sin. You're going to do stuff every day. So you got to ask the most high, try your thoughts. All right? That's very important. Examining yourself. All right? Turn you into that woman that eliminates stress in her household by being in subjection to their husband. Ask the most high to put the spirit on you so you won't even you won't even wouldn't even need or have that thought to even talk back to your husband. If your husband tell you to do something, you just do it. Pretty much it, y'all. Hopefully this helps some sisters. Um Call hello, you how about shimmy how shy. I felt like I was everywhere. I feel like I could have did this better. I don't know, I might have to remake this. Um but anyway, uh, yeah, if y'all want to leave comments, let me know. Call hello, you how about shimmy, how shy. And um, hopefully, Lord willing, it's help sisters stay strong in the spirit. Love y'all. Shalom.